eventually I'll post a haul and a reading log video that literally isn't at the end of the previous month. I'm gonna get to it, but I'm trying to figure it out. I'm just a baby. I'm just a baby. Spirit guns! Yay, hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Ballhead of Senpai. Um did a good amount of reading this month. Actually, not really. I feel like I read way less than I did last month. I only got through 20 volumes. I don't know if that's like a lot or not, but whatever, it's what I read. Might ramble on about a couple of them. And I completely just blanked. Sorry. <laughs> One of the things that I read this month was volume two of Days of Love at Seaside Villa. I think I've talked about this series in particular like three times and I just keep repeating myself but I'm gonna say it again for the church. Lesbians falling in love by the seaside. We don't need anything else but that. Real talk though, this volume was really good. Our character who has moved to the seaside to be with the character who has already lived by the seaside kind of settling down into her new home and to her new job and really cool kind of end of the chapter cliffhanger so i'm really excited to see what happens in the next volume unfortunately it doesn't come out for like two months maybe three like either july or august and i'm just literally dying waiting for it next was probably my favorite read for the month my lesbian experience with loneliness and my solo exchange diary volumes one and two so this series was really interesting. I actually found the first volume at my used bookstore and essentially it's just a biographical the author is like suffering from like 10 years of intense depression and so it kind of starts with their journey from that to where they currently are. Uh, they definitely go through a lot of uh, really intense topics. So it's all very 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 personal, deep, but really well done, really amazing. And I absolutely loved it. The artwork is really great. It's just all black, white, and pink, uh, almost minimalistic. It's almost like the art is meant not to distract from the content, which the content is, you know, serious stuff. So that makes sense. But yeah, I'm really, really, really gonna try and do like a review about it. I actually filmed one like two weeks ago after I had just finished reading it but it ended up being 40 minutes long and just me gushing about it and like <sighs> that review didn't need to be 40 minutes long that's all I'm trying to tell you. So next, <sighs> The Gods Lie. So this was another one that I had picked up just because it was pretty and absolute blind buy at my bookstore, half off, just figured why not. Essentially it's about uh, these two kids who end up, because of reasons, um, kind of living by themselves during, you know, the course of like two weeks or so of summer and everything that kind of goes down with that. So the artwork is amazing. I want to show you something. I need to start putting like bookmarks so I can specifically go to pages that don't have spoilers on them so that I can show you guys. But yeah, I mean, just something as simple as that kind of really catches a lot of like the feeling and the emotionalness. And it was really good. It was pretty quick read too. I think I read it maybe in like 15 minutes, but it was just really great, really heartfelt. I think actually Bizarre Individual had left a comment when I did the haul featuring this one. And he was like, yeah, it's so great. It made me cry. And I was like, well, then I have to read it because I love sad stuff. And it did indeed make me cry, but it was, it was really good. So I would definitely recommend that. Next we have Children of the Whales Volume 1. So this was uh, another one that I just kind of picked up on the whim, although I at least had heard some people um, talk about it and say pretty good things about it, and they were right. Actually, I think my sister said that she watched the anime and that she really liked it and she thought I would enjoy it, so that's always good. If nobody else, I always trust my sister's recommendations. My brother, yeah, essentially we have this kid who acts as like the archivist for his little uh, floating island in the middle of the sand, desert, sea thing called the mud whale. They're kind of like the only people that are alive or they think that they're the only people that are alive. But while they're out scavenging, they find like this one girl. And so it kind of goes from there. 
that sounds like I said a lot of stuff, but it really was just all on the back, okay? I promise none of that was a spoiler. Really great, really interesting. Um, left on a really, 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 really intense cliffhanger. And I think I have like the next four volumes on order. So I'm really excited to go and finish reading or read more of that, so yeah. Okay, so My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness was my number one read for the month. I think number two has to go to ZOM 100 yeah it was so good so essentially we have our main character i'm sorry i can't remember like anybody's names right now but our main character is just entering the workforce or whatever and he's really excited for his job and then lo and behold time passes and he hates his job and the zombie apocalypse happens he doesn't have to go to work and he's so excited about it if i tell you y'all i was dying laughing like if you've if you've ever worked somewhere and you like absolutely hated your job and i don't i don't mean like you don't like this shift you don't like this co-worker you don't like your boss you're just having a bad day and you want to stay home no i mean if you've ever really 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 hated your job like considered arson but then had to consider the fact that you're probably too cute to go to jail but then also consider that it might be worth it and that you look good in orange and you look good in tan so hey it might just all work out in the end like if you've ever hated your job like that you will probably really 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 enjoy this and find it super relatable my job now i have i love it's great it's amazing but i've definitely worked at two jobs that i absolutely like hated from the core of my being Ugh. if you've ever had that feeling you know what i'm talking about just the idea of like being so excited for the zombie apocalypse simply because you do not have to go to work that day. Relatable, inspired, amazing, mind blowing. We love it. Just read it. <laughs> and the artwork is also really great, which is always a good plus. Um, really expressive. It's all just so over the top in a way and it really adds to the kind of juxtaposition of the zombie apocalypse being so happy that you don't have to go to work it all makes sense i don't know just read it if you haven't already but i feel like you probably have so good for you next we have b stars volumes one and volumes two i watched b stars when it first came out on netflix and i thought it was really cool zootopia but for adults also on crack more than anything i really 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 love the art the anime is amazing it's gorgeous i love the mix of kind of 2d sci-fi sci-fi the 2d mixed with the cgi um almost kind of like knights of sidonia as great as the animation is for the anime the animation in the manga is just kind of on another level when you're watching a medium you have usually you have a lot of other things to kind of add to the ambiance and to the effect that the viewers are gonna have so you have music to enhance scenes you have uh, focusing shots to emphasize stuff like that all of it kind of goes into the overall picture of whatever it is that you're watching but i feel like just as a whole the artist still does a really 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 amazing job of really conveying specific scenes specific moods specific feelings without the use of things that you get when you're creating a show like the use of um, shadow to kind of not necessarily make you feel afraid but to make you feel that level of trepidation you know the kind of messy ink scrawls to kind of get you way more heightened and then you have really simple pages where it's just kind of you know regular school fluff stuff that's happening yeah these stars so next we have blue flag volumes one two listen y'all said blue flag was gonna be good and you were absolutely right. I feel like I really don't need to say like that much about it simply because we've all been talking about it in the community. The hype is real. Get up on the train, get your ticket, choo choo, my homie. It is what it is. I just, I absolutely loved it. Slice of life, but not messy. Basically when people were talking about it, they were just kind of saying like, oh, like it's like a love triangle. So I was like, okay, like that sounds normal. But I think what probably makes this one really good or at least really stand out from a lot of the other slice of life school romance drama stuff that we end up reading is that it seems very natural and very down to earth. A lot of times we see a lot of the same kind of reoccurring types of drama being made to kind of push the plot along, which is great. But I feel like Blue Flag doesn't really fall into that. And I feel like the feelings of the characters is taken very, very, very seriously, which for me is something, you know, kind of 
new and so it's just a really nice not overly troped up dramatic type of romance between you know these kids at this school and it's just really nice also it's not like super fan servicey or hot and heavy smutty all that kind of stuff which is great you know like i love that kind of stuff full stop but it's not in blue flag it's not those things in blue flag and i appreciate that as well the characters are taken seriously and their feelings are taken seriously and so that's just really cool and really good and yeah all right so next we have spy family volumes two through four yay best girl anya second best girl your and the Pepino, I love him. So not much else to say about Spy Family, although I said that about Blue Flag and then I ended up talking for like five minutes about Blue Flag. So you never know with me basically. <sighs> oh my God, it's so funny. I feel like there's really, seriously this time, really nothing else extra to like talk about it. Except that I'm really loving that Anya is becoming more of a focal point for the series. Like I thought because it's, you know, the made up family with the secret spy, the secret assassin, and the secret dollar telepath. I thought that we would really be focusing more so on the spy, Lloyd. And we definitely are, but it's just really cool to kind of be wrong in the sense that I thought that we would be following him more and you're kind of getting like an even amount of all of the family. Um, if not, probably more so more stuff with Anya. I love her, she's great and amazing. Just look at her face, like, oh, big mood. So yeah, this is great. I'm loving this series. I think the next volume comes out in June. I think it's June. It's very far away and that makes me very sad. So the last super ultra amazing thing that I read this month was almost something that wasn't super amazing and ultra cool actually. And I feel like I'm gonna get some flack for it, but I'm gonna say, I'm gonna give that to Chainsaw Man volumes one, two, and three. I think just, okay, before we get into anything else, like the covers for Chainsaw Man are just some of the absolute best. Like, let's just start there. I ended up picking up volume three out of Barnes and Nobles because I just saw it there. Figured that I was gonna read it. I think I had volumes one and two on order already, but it was like two months and they hadn't come in yet. People were selling like volume one online for like $200, which, honey. No, volume one came in. So I was really excited about it and I read it and it was cool. It was okay, but it wasn't like mesmerizing, spellbinding, rip my heart out of my chest. It wasn't like that. And that's kind of what I was expecting. I feel like my feelings for just volume one weren't necessarily because it wasn't great because I did really enjoy it like the artwork is great um there's a lot of good humor supernatural elements and all that kind of stuff when i read the first one the ending was very like the end of volume one was very incomplete and it just kind of made me upset i was very like kind of mad uh, i don't know how to describe it because it didn't feel like a cliffhanger it just felt incomplete where it, the end of volume one happens it's like so where's the rest of the story it felt like it cut me off like in the middle of a story versus at the end of the story where you you have a cliffhanger if that makes sense so i was just kind of like again didn't not like it just didn't like it as much as i thought i was based off the hype that it's been getting and then volume two came in and when volume two came in i actually decided to give volume one a reread just to see and then it hit and then I was like, okay, I see the hype. This is really good. I love it. It's amazing, wonderful, on to the next. I don't know, like whatever I was looking for at the end of volume one that I didn't get, I got it in volume two. So those are all of my favorite volumes of manga that I read this month, on to the other stuff. <coughs> Considering that I read 20 volumes this month, my not great, super amazing stack isn't too big which is great the stuff that was okay and that i'm probably gonna follow up on at least you know another volume or maybe two extra volumes just to really get a good idea of it yeah that's the stuff so first in that category is going to be the demon prince of momichi house so i was really kind of excited about this one and so essentially what happens is that there is a young girl who inherits this house and it's like in between or like the bridge between the spiritual world and the human world so she's supposed to like move in there and be a guardian uh but when she gets there there's people there's like these three guys that are squatting at her house and they're like yeah you gotta go and she's like 
my name's on the lease, so y'all gotta go. So the premise of it seemed really good because I thought that she was gonna be doing a lot of super natural things, but so far that didn't really happen. Um, it's kind of just following the shoujo we girl meets really cute guy and sh Oh, he's so beautiful. And it's like, okay, but like you're in a house with like ghosts and demons and yokai and like break out the Ouija board, do a seance. I'm trying to get some Ghostbuster stuff up in here. And that's really just kind of like not what happens. The artwork is great. It's really pretty, really amazing. But the first volume just really didn't focus on the supernatural elements as far as her kind of being more so interested with the people that are living in her house as opposed to the demons that are living like in her house. Boys, demons. Like, it should be a win-win. That being said, I will probably give this like the good old rule of three try. I think it would really be a good fit for me if later on we do delve more into the supernatural aspect of it or the things that she's going to be doing as, you know, the person who's supposed to be the guardian of this house. So yeah, so I'll keep going because I, if it, if it does hit that stride, like I think it'll be really good. So after that we have and i feel like i might get some flack for this too but you know what it is what it is i am a hero volume one there was something on the back that i want to make sure was on the backs but i'm not spoiling it for you because i care okay i really don't be remembering characters names i am so sorry basically this guy is a mentally unhinged that's what it says on the description okay i didn't just like make that up manga artist and the zombie apocalypse happens right so i was like okay 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 but i don't think i really took the whole mentally unhinged part seriously i would say like the first quarter of the book things are happening and i was just like why are these things happening what is this what what is that who are you and I, again i think it was more so me just because i really didn't ex like it said mentally unhinged but I, I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting his mentally unhingedness, good word, right? To take the form that it did as far as like how it is expressed in the manga. And then like we had to wait to get to the zombie apocalypse. And like, I don't wanna wait for the zombie apocalypse. I want it to happen now. Based on those two things, I really didn't necessarily get into the story until like halfway through, which I mean, this is a big boy. I would say probably up until halfway through, I was just really contemplating like if I was even gonna finish it. Cause I'm not one to make myself finish reading something or finish watching something if I don't like it. Like I'm too grown for all of that. If it don't hit, I must quit. But eventually it did. It did hit its stride. I did kind of acclimate to how the mentally unhingedness is being portrayed in the series and it all came together and it was indeed good. So yes. All right, those were the only two that were in my halfway kind of point. So there was really only one thing that I absolutely did not care for. I'm not gonna continue reading. Don't even necessarily wanna do the, oh, just try another volume or something like that. <laughs> And that was Takane and Hana. Before we get to the synopsis, let me just let y'all know that I knew what I was going into when I picked it up, okay? Basically, it's like an arranged marriage that gets swapped between like the beautiful, uh, cool older sister and the bratty kind of high school younger sister or whatever to the super rich heir of something that he's gonna inherit, businessman, something like that. So I was just like, okay, this sounds like trash and I love trash. Trash shows, trash books, trash manga. If it's trash, give it to me, okay? Like, we acting like raccoons out here. Like, you are what you read, bruh. So it's not like I went into this expecting, you know, like, something amazing and beautifully well-written and intense with the feels like with Blue Flag. Like, I definitely wasn't expecting anything like that for this series. I expected that it was just gonna be, like, some sugar daddy realness, okay? And that's kind of what you get, but the whole ser the whole volume just really did not translate for me. I think what it was is that it's funny, but the comedy is very slapstick. Because it is slapstick humor and it's meant to be quick, it just didn't translate for me when I was reading it. I think this would probably be a really great anime. I don't know if there's an anime for it yet or whatever, but I think that the humor of it would probably be way better, you know, if it was animated and not necessarily something where it's like, oh, he wasn't there, like, 
literally on the last page and now he's here how why is he here how did how did he get here what's going on i am so confused i'm not having a good time i don't get it which is really kind of how i felt like for a lot of it it's a sad day when you know the trash isn't fulfilling but it, this one just wasn't for me so if anybody else has read this or any of the other stuff that i mentioned and you felt like super differently about it or you kind of understood what I was talking about let me know in the comments I have to say that at least with manga it's really easy to figure out if it's something that I don't like personally or if I don't like it because of the material and so far most of the stuff that I haven't liked has been a me thing which is interesting because other times I watch stuff or um you know I'll listen to something a podcast watch a show watch an anime and I'm like yeah this is crap and not even the good crap like this is just crap crap poo poo caca i don't like it but so far it's it's more so been like it's not that it's bad it's just that it's really not for me like i said if it don't hit i must quit but yeah so those were my 20 volumes of stuff sus oh those ones are backwards whatever um uh, my 20 volumes of manga that i read this month this month for the month of march and i know that this is like super late but i just i really haven't figured out like the perfect balance between everyday life work life and using my free time to do videos um yeah uh have a good day and um love to hear if you've read any of these other um volumes if you liked them if you didn't like them whatever let me know down in the comments it's always cool talking to you guys but yeah senpai out